What are the top three mistakes that I see new shooters make out here on the range? Welcome back to the range guys. We're going to talk about the top three mistakes that I see new shooters make when we come out here and train. We get to train a lot of people, all right guys? We have people out here, this is our private range, we have people out here uh, usually on a weekly basis to train and a lot of times our shooters are first time shooters, all right? They've never put their hands on a gun before uh, and they are starting out from scratch and so we get to see a lot of crazy stuff happen. So not just with the new shooters, but another thing, we have guys come out here and girls come out here that have been around guns their whole life, right? And they have a lot of bad habits. They have a ton of bad habits. So uh, we see a lot of crazy mistakes be, uh, be made by people who claim to have been around guns their whole lives. They're, they're actually usually worse than the people who have never shot before in terms of doing crazy stuff and making mistakes. But we're gonna talk through the top three here today out on the range. And the first one's gonna, gonna revolve around uh, our grip. The second one's gonna revolve around our trigger press. The third one is gonna revolve around how we manipulate the weapon. These are three very, very common things. We're gonna talk through what they do, uh, what problems they cause, and how to fix them. So, let's talk about problem number number one. I told you it, uh, it originates from or is caused by a poor grip. Problem number one is what we call limp wristing the gun. We see it happen all the time out here. Um, people, uh, students have a poor grip on the weapon and essentially when they go to fire the weapon the energy from the slide uh, it, it the slide doesn't cycle essentially they're limp wristing the gun so the energy from the slide is taken away which causes the weapon not to cycle all right and a lot of times our students think well I've got a piece of crap gun it just keeps malfunctioning I've literally seen people out here with uh, with glocks or or uh, SIGs or CZs, doesn't matter, great pistols, right? And they literally are single shot malfunction, single shot malfunction. And it's all because they're limp wristing. It's, the gun's fine, it's your grip, it's the way that you're holding the gun. Um, I can tell you how to grip the weapon, but if you don't listen to me, well, I can't grip the weapon for you, okay? So this is limp wristing, all right? Let's actually demonstrate it real quick. Um, a lot of times with limp wristing too, your gun may function if your grip is poor and you're limp wristing the weapon. It may function for a while. As the weapon starts to get a little dirty though, it will really start to fail if you're not gripping that weapon right and allowing the slide to cycle properly. All right. So again, we talked about we talked about it originating from a poor grip. So what we see a lot of times with limp wristing is we see a low grip, so students gripping the weapon. You see how low my thumbs are on that weapon right there? So we've got a low grip. A lot of times we'll also see a gap between the beaver tail of the weapon and the web of the thumb right there. So basically being too low on the weapon. What allows us to control the recoil and what allows this weapon to function the most efficiently is when we get as high as we possibly can on the weapon. So low grip, um, another thing a low grip does is it puts this bend in your wrist right here. All right, so we're actually trying to control the recoil with that wrist joint. If we get nice and high on the weapon, it creates a straight line in our wrist, which transfers the recoil of the weapon back into the bones of our arms. So let me show you real quick what a low grip looks like and why we call this limp wristing. So let's say I'm way down here, my thumbs are low, I've got a little gap between the beaver tail of the weapon, and also we, we always see a gap in students' palms back here. So let's see what this looks like with a low grip. All right, you guys can see how much that weapon is jumping in my hand with that low grip. So let's grip the weapon properly. Let's get high in the beaver tail, get as high up on the trigger guard as we possibly can, wrap our outside hand around, get our thumbs 
nice and high on the slide, just like this, all right? That doesn't hurt anything. If your thumb is touching that slide, it's not gonna hurt anything. So nice and high on the slide. All right, we're squeezing. We get about 30% of our grip here with our inside hand. Outside hand, we get about 70%. Uh, percent. So I'm squeezing here. Inside hand's about 30%. Thumb's nice and high. I press out. Now, as I press out, my palms come, are coming together in the back. Now, let's see what this looks like. You see that? Versus a low grip with a bend in the wrist. Here we go. Thumbs high on the slide. You guys can see how much more efficient that is and you guys can see why with that low grip we lose energy out of the slide and cause the weapon to malfunction. Big problem we see out here on the range. Poor grip, limp wrist the gun, it malfunctions time after time. Alright guys, so you got to see the difference between a bad grip and a good grip and how the slide cycles, right, and how we can prevent that limp wrist and malfunctions that are produced by limp wristing the weapon. So let's talk about the second most common mistake that we see from students out here on the range. All right, we talked about grip. The second most common mistake is all about the trigger press. All right, so many people struggle with trigger press and that's why when we review guns out here, we talk so much about the trigger because it's such an important part of shooting. So let's talk about some mistakes that we see from trigger press out here. All right, guys, so first thing that we see a lot of times is students will have too much finger in the trigger, all right? Too much finger in the trigger well. We see that a lot of times, them wrapping their trigger finger all the way onto that first joint. That's way too much. How do we clean that up? We just want the trigger to be right there on the pad of our finger, all right? That's what we're looking for. So we see that all the time. That's the first one. All right, other things that we see in terms of trigger press. Um, a lot of times students don't understand or new shooters don't understand that a lot of this trigger is just slack, okay? They don't understand that they need to pull through the slack right up to the wall and that's where they start their press from, all right? Now once we get through that slack, all right, a lot of times what will happen they get to that wall, new shooters get to that wall, and they anticipate the weapon going off. So what do they do? They snatch the trigger, right? They jerk it, all right? We wanna press the trigger, all right? Last thing we see on trigger press, a lot of times it's hard for us until our brains get wired. It's hard for us to understand how to manipulate the trigger press, all right? Pressing the trigger with your trigger finger independently from the rest of our hands. You have to wire your brain to be able to do that. This is what new shooters usually look like when, they, when I ask them to do this, this is what they look like. They cannot manipulate this finger to press the trigger independently of the rest of their hand. All right, you guys try it if you're watching the video, all right? So the reason that's important is because if we go to press the trigger with our trigger finger here, and we're actually squeezing at the same time with these fingers as we press the trigger, what it's gonna do, it's gonna pull your shot low and left every time, all right? So if we pull through that wall, then we start to press, and we're squeezing down here with these fingers too, it's always gonna pull our shots low and left, okay? So, again, let's go over it. Big problems that we see not being able to manipulate our trigger finger independently of the rest of our hands, having too much finger on the trigger, all right? Um, and also understanding how to pull through the slack, get to that wall and start our press. So let's demonstrate how to press the trigger wrong and how to press the trigger right, all right? All right, guys, so let's talk about it real quick. Again, we talked about earlier, what would a bad trigger press look like? Again, it would look like presenting, we've got way too much finger in the trigger, all right? And then when we 
go to, to pull the trigger, instead of pressing it, we pull it and we anticipate the shot going off and we actually pull the shot low and left. Obviously this is exaggerated guys, it just takes just a little bit to pull those sights off the target, all right? Let's talk about a good trigger press. We present the weapon. This is how I press the trigger. We present the weapon. Sights are aligned on the target. Put our finger on the trigger, just the pad of our finger. We pull through the slack of the trigger. When we get to that wall, that's where we start our press. Again, I'm pressing with my trigger finger independently of the rest of my hand. I count out in my head quietly one pound, two pound, three pound. I'm putting nice even pressure on the trigger. I'm, I'm increasing the pressure that I'm putting on the trigger incrementally and evenly. So here I pull through the slack, there's the wall, one pound, two pound, three pound, four pound. Oh, there it went. It should actually surprise me when it goes off, all right? Uh, at least if, if you're a new shooter, once you get to learn the trigger, you know exactly how much pressure it takes for that shot to go. So just to demonstrate a good trigger press one more time, present the weapon, sights aligned, move my finger to the trigger, just the pad of my finger on, pull through the slack, one pound, two pound, three pound, there it goes. Reset, finger out as soon as my sights come off the target. Um, we won't talk about trigger reset in this video, we'll talk about that in another video, but the trigger press is the second most common problem that we see out here on the range. You really gotta work through that. You really gotta be able to press that trigger nice and evenly without anticipating the shot going off and pulling your sights off the target just as the bullet leaves the barrel. Okay guys, you just got to uh, see how trigger press can be the number one mistake that we see people make out here on the range, especially new shooters. Super, super important. Let's talk about the third big mistake that we see new shooters make out here. And it simply revolves around weapons manipulation, all right? Um, whenever your weapon comes out of the holster, it can only go two places. It can be pointed down range, or it needs to come out and come into your workspace. All right, that, that is the way that we shoot out here, okay? So, whenever the weapon comes out of the holster, it's coming here into my workspace where I can see what's going on with the weapon and also see what's happening downrange, or it's coming out of the holster and pointing straight downrange at the target that I want to engage. All right, a lot of people want to draw their weapon and they want to hold the weapon here. They want to work on the weapon down here, all right? They want to rack their slide, they want to load here, they want to rack their slide here. For some reason, this is where they want to work on their gun, all right? I see it time and time again. What's the problem with this? Well, one, this is not safe, all right? If I need to turn, I'm gonna sweep everyone around me that's on the line, right? This is just not a safe place to have the weapon. What else is wrong with this? I have to take my eyes off of whatever's happening downrange to look down at my weapon when it's right here. You guys understand that? This is why we call this the workspace. This is why you guys see me move with my weapon in the high ready position and you see me do all my reloads, you see me do anything I do, when I'm actually up here shooting, all right, you see me do it here in my workspace. It's because right here, I can see what's happening with the weapon, whether there's a malfunction, is the slide locked to the rear, what's going on with the weapon, and I can immediately shift my focus to what's happening downrange in a split second. I can also move here, right? This is a safe way for me to move out on the range, all right? So don't get lazy. Get your weapon into the workspace as soon as it comes out of the holster, or if you're actually shooting and you come back to do a reload, you're coming back to your workspace. You're not coming back down here to do anything to this gun ever, all right? Um, you guys understand, we are out here, here filming, all right? When you see us filming out here, unless we're on the line running drills, you might see me hold this weapon like this at, at times on the film, right? That's because we're filming. I have to show you things, okay? So 
when don't don't ever do that when we're on the line shooting it's workspace or downrange or in the holster that's it so that's the third most common mistake we see let's say okay let's show you what we see new shooters do this is what it looks like we get ready i say all right everybody get on the line load and make ready they come out of their holster they come right here they've got their eyes down looking at the ground they load their gun up usually rack their slide like this and then they get on ready to shoot the course of fire all right let me show you what it should look like all right all right guys get on the line load and make ready that's what it should look like all right and same with our reloads this is what a reload should look like You guys see how that was all in the workspace? It was never down here. I maintain constant situational awareness. That's how we manipulate the gun. Just to recap, three big things we see people do wrong out here. The first one is, well, we talked about it as the second one, but trigger press, right? Trigger press. We talked about manipulating the weapon. Then we talked about the grip, limp wristing the gun, causing it to malfunction. Get that crap right, man. Those are the fundamentals of marksmanship. Get it right. Go train. Enough said. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you got something out of this content, please like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and drop us a comment. We always love hearing back from all of you guys that tune in. Enough said.